Good afternoon YouTube. I know it's been a while since I've um, put anything on YouTube um, and I don't know if I should apologize. I mean I don't think that people are kind of hanging on the edge of their seats for me to make something. There are lots of other things you can do with your time. But um, you know it's I guess it's good to kind of be um, to be consistent and I haven't really been very consistent about making videos um, but I'm I am thinking that I might try and do this again. Um, so this is going to be my first video after a long time. And what I want to talk about today is some conventions of fantasy. Uh, fantasy in, in fantasy books, for example, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. Things that kind of slightly annoy me. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a random topic for a video, but, you know, most, uh, most things have been talked about at some point, so... I thought, why not um, talk about this? I think it's quite interesting, for me anyway. So, um, often in fantasy we get this, we get a kind of conception of magic as being um, something you can control with um, uh, spells and things. Like in Harry Potter, uh, you know, they wave, you wave your wand and you say an incantation, you say some words, sort of Latin sounding words, and then something happens. And in... Um, if you've read any of the Dragonlance uh, novels, um, a similar sort of thing happens where they have the mages have to learn a spell from the spell book and it sort of imprints itself in their mind. And then uh, once they've learned it, when they say the spell, it then disappears um, uh, forever. So they have to relearn it again the next time. <clears throat> um, in Lord of the Rings, I guess um, th there's not really, it's not quite the same sort of thing. I mean, they just sort of access magic in in some way. I mean, Gandalf sort of waves his staff around and sort of summons it, and it kind of happens. Um, I, I mean, I, I really like the idea of magic, and I was talking with a friend yesterday, and we were talking about, um, someone said famously said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. I don't think that's true because I think even, for example, imagine, we, let's take a kettle. If you gave a kettle to someone like, you know, a caveman and um, <laughs> he were to boil it, he would, he would probably think it was magic. But we can give an explanation of what's happening with a kettle in sort of physical terms. We can describe it in terms of um, physics. Um, there's nothing sort of extra going on outside of the realm of physics. Um, and uh, chemistry or whatever. Whereas magic is, by definition, I think something which is beyond physics, so it, it will never have an explanation which lies in uh, physics as we have it. Uh, magic is kind of something external. However, I think that in fantasy, often uh, magic as it's used is not very sort of internally consistent, which is something quite important in, in, fant in fantasy or fiction. You have to have a world where um, things are kind of explainable according to the axioms that, that um, sort of belie them. So, I mean, the magic in Harry Potter is consistent in terms of every time a person says a spell, every, every time one of the students says the magic words, it produces an effect. However, there's never really an explanation given as to why that happens. Whereas when we take, for example, um, you know, uh, in our world, if you take a pencil and drop it, it falls to the ground because gravity exerts a force on it. Um, gravity, the existence of gravity is just an axiom. We just have to accept that it's something sort of fundamental. It can't be, can't be explained anymore, or at least um, it's very difficult to kind of come up with an explanation of gravity other than that it's there. You know, you might be able to do it, but that would take very intricate physics. Anyway, so I'm I'm kind of writing a book, um, not very successfully, I have to say, because I'm going, I'm writing it very slowly, and I haven't sort of been writing it consistently either. But one of the things that interests me is to give an explanation of magic, which goes beyond just saying words, which creates an effect. I, I think that what it should be better explanation of magic, even though it doesn't exist, <laughs> which makes the whole thing sort of futile in some way, is that 
it would must be some sort of language. So when someone says a magic spell, then it produces an effect because in some way you're communicating with magic directly. I mean, that might be sort of implicit in some of these fantasy books, but it's never actually explained. Um, so, you know, like if you go to another country, for example, uh, Japan or France, how are you going to achieve things? I mean, how are you going to communicate with people if you don't speak the language? You can speak in English and they're going to look at you and sort of just go, what? <laughs> so you have to know some basic, some basic uh, language. Um, so once you can kind of order um, some bread in Japanese, you can say that and then you'll get the bread. So it's kind of cause and effect in that sense. Um, which in it is kind of, that's an equivalent thing with magic. You say the words and you get the effect. What they're missing out in most of the fantasy books is that when you say the words, you are communicating in some way, presumably. Otherwise, it's just sort of pointless. It's just, it's kind of saying you have these words which produces this effect sort of arbitrarily, which I don't like. So, yeah. So I think that's um, something that... Um, Something that would be best, be, something that would be better uh, fantasy, and that's why I want to sort of pursue that idea. Also, I don't like the idea of people limiting magic. For example, you have to um, dig up an acorn on the twenty seventh of December, um, and then you can do such and such magic. I kind of think it's a bit silly, especially when they don't give any sort of um, reason for that. It's just it's just a ritual. It's just kind of you have to do that, and then you'll be able to do magic. I guess, like, I don't really like the idea of mysticism as being, like, a really key part of magic. I think it's much more interesting for me when um, magic might appear to be mystical, but actually that has its, or its own sort of internal logic uh, and it's coherent, it's internally coherent. Um, and, you know, um, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like another... Uh, force, it's like another force which has its own sort of uh, rules, it's kind of scientifically explainable in itself. So, so yeah. <laughs> it might be that other people are going to really disagree with this and they like the whole idea of magic and being a bit um, vague and a bit lawless and sort of it does things kind of when it wants to. Um, I don't particularly like that, but perhaps some other people do and it'd be interesting to see if um, People have different ideas about um, magic in fantasy, and um, and what uh, what what they think about that. Another thing I like to talk about um, within the realm of fantasy uh, are the, is this idea of sort of um, kind of perfect heroes. Um, now I know that to have a kind of a psychologically interesting character, he kind of has to have a flaw, but at the end of the story it's kind of taken for granted that this hero is going to kind of overcome his flaw and um, and uh, do whatever he's supposed to. But I think, um, I mean, in the real world people often have kind of irreparable flaws and they don't really get to a particular place. It's more that they reach a sort of compromise. So I, I think in, in the best fantasy, which, I mean, Lord of the Rings was is good in itself, but it's not really modern. Um, I think in, in the best kind of modern fantasy, um, characters kind of, they struggle with themselves and they reach a sort of compromise, but it's not that they always um, kind of reach perfection because I don't think, you know, perfection is 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 attainable. And even though, these, even though characters in fantasy and in fiction are kind of standing as um, sort of, idols uh, or you know people to look up to people who we look, people who we look up to as readers even though that's the case I still think it's um, it's better and we can kind of relate to them more these characters um, if if they have kind of flaws which are not sort of which they can't overcome in perhaps a way they'd like to and I think something interesting about that if you do have a character like that is that it makes us reflect on our own world which I think fantasy should do. I don't think fantasy should be kind of entirely unconnected from the world because, I mean, for a start, it's not anyway. I mean, it's coming from our imaginations which exist in this world. I think every good fantasy book should make you kind of reflect on the human condition somewhat. 
um, unless you're writing about sort of magic rabbits, in which case it'd be kind of hard to to do that. Um, so, so yeah, <laughs> I think I'll just leave it at that. And so those those are my two sort of qualms of fantasy. Um, un internally incoherent magic, or magic which doesn't have any kind of uh, explanation, and then sort of perfect uh, uh, heroes or, or characters, which which kind of always manage to get what they want and are therefore sort of unrealistic in the sense that they don't tell us anything um, about the human condition. Maybe they sort of set false standards for us as readers and we sort of wish, why could I not be like that? Whereas we would never be able to be like that even if we existed in this fantasy world. Um, again, also, I'd be interested in, in people's comments about my second point if they, if they think that actually it's a good thing we have characters like that. And but if you could provide some kind of justification for why you think so, that would also be good. I think I'll leave it at that, and I wish you a good day, and hasta luego. <laughs>